Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Marvel Select Zombie Sabretooth figure. And after last year's Zombie Magneto, I was very excited to see Diamond Select or Marvel Select go back and do another zombie figure. From my understanding, under the new contract with Disney, they can bring back Marvel Zombies as long as only villains are turned into zombies. But it seems like both Diamond and I think Gentle Giant have been taking full advantage of that, turning out different incarnations of zombie supervillains. Diamond has also done some mini-mate sets, which I haven't picked up, but these select figures I think are too badass and fit in fairly well with my other horror action figures. So I was very excited to see what they did with Sabretooth. Sabretooth comes with a display base, which I think is really cool looking. First up, I'm going to mention that it has no pegs on it, so it's kind of annoying in that respect. But it's really nicely detailed. We have some kind of concrete ground effects. We have claw slashes going through. Look at the R from Sabretooth. We have five claws here, and you can see four long scratches in that part. Bunch of cracks and broken up debris all over the place. Even the edge has a rough texture to it. And then continuing on the theme from the previous release, we have part of the Goblin Glider. So we have more scratches, probably from Sabretooth here. I like how they have the metal kind of peel up in it, which looks really nice. There's a great rivet effect going on here, too. And you can see some of the electronics inside of the glider, the busted up motor, the vent, everything. Really, really cool looking. Great attention to detail here. My only real gripe is the fact that maybe they could have done a little more stylized of something with the Goblin Glider, just to give it a different color than the stone. There's more of a silver with some kind of brass colorations or rust colorations in the glider, but it's really not enough of a difference beyond the concrete base to really make it stand out. I heard people saying that it would conjoin with the previous base. I've yet to really figure out how that would go. I mean, you can kind of line it up like that, I guess, and they kind of stay together, but they're not like they really interlock or anything. We flip around to the other side. No, I'm just trying to line up the crack in the concrete there and see if I can get anything out of it. But I have never found any angle on here where they really feel like they interlock and make a solid piece. So I think it's really just to use your imagination to kind of line them up in a way that feels like it would be something. I'm thinking this is probably the most likely configuration for it. But still cool that they match enough, and of course we have the Green Goblin hand here, and then we have the glider, so we're obviously building towards something. Now the previous figure with these zombie select figures was the Magneto, and that really went off some of the art from the covers, which wasn't really accurate to what was in the books. I feel like Sabretooth is much more ripped from the pages of the book, as far as his overall design aesthetic. He definitely follows more of the zombie rules of the Marvel Zombie Universe. We can see he has some great kind of dead white eyes in there, which are just kind of superhero eyes anyway. We have his teeth with the, no gums or anything over top of them, which I consider to be the trademark of a Marvel Universe zombie. He's got his bloody, bloody mutton chops, blood all over his face. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can almost see there's bits of his skull protruding where his cheekbones are. But there's really no clear definition between what's blood of his own face and what's blood from eating his victims. Inside his mouth, he has a very nasty looking little tongue in there. The hair on top of his head is still relatively clean. They did a black wash over the blonde, which gives it a pretty good look. He has this giant saber tooth pimp collar going on here, big plume of hair. This is a rubberized plastic, so it's a little pliable, but it comes way far up here in the back, and then goes in a stripe down his back a bit, which looks more like a hyena, which I really like. More blood effect here, especially around his head, where he would have been eating something. Down the chest, we have the classic saber tooth outfit, the brown and orange. A lot of good wrinkles in there with the musculature and everything, but then we have some definite torn up meaty areas. We got some of his chest muscle exposed there, his whole side exposed here, and it looks like there's three claw marks going through here. So that seems to be an indication that this might have been Wolverine. Even going down his leg, we have another three claw marks here. So I think that's kind of a cool detail that they put in Wolverine versus Sabretooth, even though they won't be able to do a Wolverine, at least with the current rules Disney has. Shoulder up here has a nice chunk taken out of it, a nice bite mark there. More exposed muscle. Another great section here on his forearm. We have the spike coming out of his elbow. His hands all torn up as well. You can see all the ligaments and tendons in there. The claws themselves look pretty vicious. Going around the back, we have a very large exposed area. Another what looks like a bite mark there on his side. And that actually continues onto the shoulder. So that's a really neat touch that they've incorporated the entire wound into two different sections of the figure. Then over on his other arm, 
I never knew that Sabretooth's elbow spikes were supposed to be bone. I also thought they were part of his costume. But they've exposed it here as a big jagged bone piece coming out of his elbow. And then this hand is even more chewed up. And we have some of his fingers exposed with his actual razor claws on them. Which this hand with the big claws looks a little too big compared to his gloved hand. So I don't know if it's supposed to be like swollen or something. But it's just really weird because they don't really look like they belong together. Going further down the body, we do have these raised up sections, the stitched on little stripes here. The whole side of his leg is torn away with a great anatomical sculpt. And all this anatomical stuff is nice and glossy as well, which I really enjoy. And the last little bit here on his foot, we just have a little extra blood there right at his ankle. For articulation, he has a ball joint at the base of the neck, so he'll look very far down. Can't really look up, though. His head pops right off if you try to look too far up. It'll rotate side to side as well as tilts. We do have a hinge at the jaw, so we'll open a decent amount. It does look kind of funny just because of the way it hinges. It kind of recesses down into his neck there when you open it so it doesn't really work as well as I'd like it to. Shoulders are on pin socket joints so they'll go out to the side and they will also go forward and back. We have a hinge here at the elbow, a rotation here at the wrist, a rotation at the waist. Legs will go forward. They won't really go back because of his butt. They'll go out to the side. There's a double joint at the knee, a hinge at the foot, as well as an ankle rocker. The articulation here on Sabretooth isn't bad. I know they are limited how many articulation points they could put on the Marvel Select. It's part of their contract. However, I really kind of wish they would have maybe made a single jointed knee and would have given us the ability to swivel at the elbow to give him a little better range of motion. For a size comparison, here's Zombie Sabretooth next to his normal Marvel Select counterpart. Granted, there is, I think, another Sabretooth that's more of his first appearance look, but this is closer to the same costume and look. And when I first saw pictures of the Zombie Sabretooth, I thought he was going to be very, very close to this other release. That's actually why I picked up this other release, was just to have the comparison point, since I had the normal and Zombie Magneto. Unfortunately, there are a lot of little stylistic changes that end up making a huge difference between these two versions of Sabretooth. The zombie version is much more realistic and gritty looking. The costume even looks more realistic with stitched on pieces instead of the straight up unitard look. The blonde hair is much more understated on this new version as well. So you don't have a straight up one-to-one -one transformation look going on here. But I think it is kind of cool to see these two guys together. And here he is next to the previous release, the Marvel Select Zombie Magneto. We can see Sabretooth is in pretty good scale, a good amount taller than Magneto is, and definitely a much bulkier figure. I really like this Zombie Sabretooth figure, but he's far from perfect. I think the articulation is actually my biggest gripe with him. The sculpting and detailing on him is beautiful. The paint's really well done as well. I'm glad they went with a character that's not in a red costume this time, so it's much easier to tell where the gory meat parts are and where the costume is. That was a big problem I had with that Magneto figure. But the articulation's just lacking enough to drive me nuts. If he had swivels at his elbows, I think it would have really solved a lot of my problems with this figure. The rest of him is pretty darn posable, but it's just the fact that his arms are kind of always stuck a little bit outreached that just drives me up the wall. But still a very solid recommend on this figure. He's incredibly cool and very, very nasty looking. And at this point, if we could just use what we've seen so far, I'm guessing they're going to be doing a Marvel zombie figure one a year for the foreseeable future. Or at least I hope they do because I've been enjoying this line. But hopefully the next time they do one, it's not another X-Men character. Not that I mind. X-Men was my gateway into the Marvel Universe. They're probably still my favorite corner of the Marvel Universe. But especially looking at the mini-mates they've done, it just makes me more excited to see other characters in this line. A zombie kingpin would be freaking crazy. Zombie Doctor Doom would also be on my short list of just badass characters you could do in zombie form. So let me know in the comments below what Marvel villain would you like to see get the Marvel Select zombie treatment. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also follow me on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.